Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Metroid 2 Return of Samus. My name is Mecha Prime. I'll be guiding you through this game. It was released in 1991, at least for us stateside here, on the Nintendo Game Boy console, which isn't really a console, it's a handheld video game system, just in case you've been living under a rock. Regardless, I will be playing this in the original black and white resolution, of course, to preserve the nostalgia of it, so if you want color, tough. You're gonna have to get it somewhere else. That's just how I roll. Ignore that pointless morph ball pun. Regardless, this game was the second game released in the series after the original Metroid on the NES, but in terms of storyline, it is number six, following the original NES Metroid and the Prime series. So, the story of this game has Samus returning to the Metroid homeworld of SR388 to exterminate the species the Galactic Federation has deemed it too dangerous to exist. So while in previous games Samus has been fighting off space pirates to make sure they don't use the Metroids to their advantage, here we get to kill all the Metroids. So, SR388 is kind of a basically just a big cave. So we just go deeper and deeper. It follows the the same logic of the original NES Metroid in that you just explore. Although the world is a little bit smaller here, but that has to do with the limitations of the Game Boy system. And we've already found our first Metroid. Hello there, Mr. Alpha Metroid. These guys aren't very dangerous, so... I don't really much to say about them. In fact, they're kind of a joke. This is the first game in the series to introduce multiple kinds of Metroid. You didn't get anything other than the brain-sucking claw Metroid. Now don't worry, we're going to see those a little later in this game, but... It's pretty fun to fight off different kinds. So, I'll be introducing them to you as we find them. The different kinds of Metroids didn't show up again until Metroid Fusion on the Game Boy Advance, where you fought off an Omega Metroid at the very end of the game. And if you didn't want that spoiled, I'm so very sorry, but... Tough, like I said. Anyway, this is going to be a 100% item collection run of the game. I'm going to collect every single upgrade that you can, as well as defeat all of the Metroids. Now, I also want to do this for the good ending. When, how do you get the good ending? You beat it in under three hours, of course. Now, that doesn't seem too hard, so I'm going to try and beat it under two. We're just going to see what happens. Now, you may have noticed that I just skipped that save post there. I'm not going to be using any in-game saves. Now, that's just silly, you may say, but I say there's a point. An interesting little bit of information about this game is that if you use the in-game saves and then shut off the system and resume play later, it will round your in-game time to the nearest minute. Now that may not sound like a big deal, but I'm here for trying to get an accurate time. So I'm not going to be using any in-game saves. I'm just going to be doing this as a single solitary run straight on through, fighting them down, bringing down the man, bringing down the Metroids, whatever you want. Now you may have noticed that when I f defeated that Metroid earlier, a little earthquake kind of happened. There's a gimmick in this game in that you can defeat a certain number of Metroids and a new path opens up. It's the game's way of making sure you don't get a little too ahead of yourself. Now, that being said, there's still a certain open-endedness to this game that you can feel in many of the Metroid games, but it's not as apparent here in this one. It's kind of difficult to sequence break your way to the end of the game, although it is possible, of course, but that would take some serious effort. One of the major complaints about this game is that it's a lack of musical prowess. Now, some would say that's bad. I kind of like it. I think it adds a little bit to the atmosphere of the planet. We made our way outside here. We're going to make our way into a Chozo temple, where we're going to collect some items. Doesn't that sound like fun? I think it does. Skipping another save pose, of course. I'll never mention that again. So the first thing we want to do is descend this little stairway here. Forget that pass to the right. We'll be taking it on our way back up, of course. This room should look semi-familiar to you Metroid players. It means that items are about to be gotten. Alright, so our first power-up is the bomb. 
highly useful because we can pretty much use it to get anywhere. You want to bomb lots of places. And the first place you want to bomb is right here to collect our first missile upgrade. Now, you may notice I put a little drop-down menu there. This game doesn't really keep track of item collection, so when I say I'm going to 100% it, it's not like the game is helping me do that because it doesn't count items. It's just a personal goal, really. So what I'm going to do is keep track of all of the items myself so that we can see how far I've gotten. And there you go. So the reason we skipped the path is because you can't get there without the bombs. And here we've already gotten our first of six energy tanks in the game. We are well on our way to 100% already. Now the maximum number of missiles you can let collect are 250 missiles that uh, you can get up to in 18 missile upgrades. And you may collect five energy tanks even though there are six upgrades, but we'll talk about that a little later. We're already to another item, the Ice Beam. This beam is very, very useful, and it also is prevalent in just about every single Metroid game because ice is the Metroid's natural enemy. Although, I will say, in that this game, the various Metroid types, the Ice Beam doesn't do a darn thing to them. They are defeated by missiles only. So it's a nifty little room, we can pick up some power-ups here. Very easy missile upgrade right there. Those blocks, you can shoot them and then they just respawn. Another easy missile upgrade down here. Now the missile upgrade on the top is a little bit trickier to get unless you have the spider ball, but we're going to use a sequence breaking trick to grab it in that if you release yourself from the ball in midair, you have a split second to make an extra jump. It's a glitch in the game. Another glitch in the game is that if Samus takes damage, she may jump once again in midair, just like I just did right there. Both of these are pretty useful for reaching higher up places that you couldn't normally get to. They're also a standby for serious sequence breakers. I'm not going to be doing any serious sequence breaking, but I may do a few things to save myself some time. That shell there is a Metroid egg. You can pretty much figure out where the Metroids are by following those eggs. That just means that there's a Metroid nearby, although it's not exactly here. I meant to do that, I swear. This quiet little room holds the spider ball. Another incredibly useful item. Funny they're giving you all the most incredibly useful items in the very beginning. The spider ball allows you to stick to walls and ceilings, which, as you can see, can get you out of a sticky situation. Haha. <laughs> wow, that was terrible. I apologize for that and any future terrible puns that I may use. Now, it might have been just faster to spider ball through that, but I don't always make the greatest choices, and I'm not trying to do this as a... Because the, the, uh, the speedrunning record non-TS for this game is just a little over an hour, and I'm not trying to set any records here. I'm just trying to beat the game in a normal type fashion. We found our second Alpha Metroid. Now, this is, as you can see, an example of the strategy of getting underneath of them. They become very simple much simpler than they already are. But of course, the next form, that'll be even more prevalent in that it is easier, but we'll talk about that when we get to one. Making our way up here, if we spider ball up this left wall, we're gonna find ourselves in another item collecting room, which will help us get to that 100% a little easier. Now we've already collected five missile upgrades. We're just on a roll. Now, the other missile upgrade is down there. Nothing in the top or bottom ones that you saw back there, so that's it. I think we're going to cut it off here for now. I'll see you guys next time for some more item collection.